Welcome to Author Mastery Insights. I am with the legendary Dr. Bob Hoffman. Welcome, Bob. How are you today, my friend? I am doing near perfect and closing the gap and a pleasure to be with you. I love that. For those not familiar with Dr. Bob, I'm going to just give a little bit of background before we jump in and we talk all things of books. So um, Dr. Bob is the president of the Masters Circle Global, a unique practice building and personal growth organization that has revolutionized the traditional model of coaching for doctors of chiropractic and other wellness providers. Throughout his career, he has achieved a wide variety of honors, including becoming the 12th president of the International Chiropractors Association, chairman of the board of the New York uh, Chiropractic Council, is a best-selling author, which we will talk about in depth, and a sought-after coach, international speaker, and the profession's lead coach on how to successfully run a brain-based wellness practice. His reputation precedes him. Uh, he's without doubt a legend within the profession and has successfully mentored and guided thousands of doctors and their teams to professional excellence and personal mastery. He is, of course, the co-author of many books, greatly best-selling. This one here, Awakening a Flourishing Brain, um, How People Are Rebooting Their Brains and Living Their Best Lives Now. Brain Balance, How to Create a Better Life by Rebalancing Your Brain, and the national bestseller, Discover Wellness, How Staying Healthy Can Make You Rich. He co-authors with incredible leaders. He speaks with amazing authority, not to mention his numerous productions with the Master Circle, truly legendary. Learning opportunity is going to be awesome. All right, Dr. Bob, let's begin. You've got a number of books there. What has been the overarching thesis of all of those books? The books that I have written and co-authored with others, um, to me, it's part of my brand. It's part of my purpose. You know, I, I believe I'm in the information distribution business. And part of that distribution I do on my coaching calls daily. Uh, part of that is live seminar. Part of that are summits online, my podcasts. But writing books is part of that as well. And I have to tell you, in um, 2007, when uh, Jason Deitch and I wrote Discover Wellness, How Staying Healthy Can Make You Rich, first, it became a bestseller the first day it came out. Um, I, I believe we were the first chiropractors in the history of the chiropractic profession to be labeled as best-selling authors. And uh, we sold about 80,000 of those books and it had a huge impact, but I discovered in the process, Marcus, that authors are looked at with a higher level of esteem than even doctors, that I was able to get invitations to groups and interviews and magazines and internet uh, that I didn't even know existed because simply because I was an author of a best-selling book. So to me, as we try to expand the image of chiropractic, to rebrand chiropractic, to refresh what chiropractic is all about, man, I wish more and more of our colleagues around the world would become authors because it gives us a, a greater level of credibility to distribute our thinking, our philosophy, our beliefs, our standards that the average person out there is just stunned and and respectful of. Yeah, that is incredible insight. And I think there's so many points I want to dive into there with the, the, the first being, you know, not just the brand and the impact that has on you, your authority, your positioning and the opportunities. But I want to come back to your first point there, you know, being in the business of, of sharing information, of, of disseminating your educational uh, material, because that is so important for chiropractic. If there was one vision I had, and you really emphasize that for chiropractors, is that we have books, that we have education out there in the community that people come to know and understand the principles and philosophies of chiropractic, the understanding of how chiropractic alters the health and well-being of people's brains, their nervous systems, their ability to adapt, their resilience. We have at this point in our lives, that is such an essential and necessary part of our service to humanity. And writing a book begins that process. So can you just start by, I mean, so many of your books are around the nervous system, awakening your flourishing black brain. I mean, I love this. And then, um, I, and I have, I apologize to everyone. I don't have the other ones here. They're in my office um, and I'm currently in quarantine, but the, the, the most recent one, you know, brain balance, how to create a better life uh, by re, rebalancing your brain. Uh, those books in particular st and start to emphasize 
the role of the of brain-based chiropractic. So again, you've shown the educational role. You're out there in the community helping people to understand the, the science of chiropractic in a readable, um, digestible, consumable way. So you, I'd love for you just to go into the process of what it has meant to produce, put this out there. And the, you've said it's open to op opportunity to speak, but what changes have people said when they read this about their health, about their life, and what has it meant on an individual basis for the person? It's meant a lot to, I mean, to the people who've read these books, it's meant a lot. I have gotten tremendous and consistently tremendous positive feedback. And part of that process, Marcus, is to write in a language that A, is understandable, because one of the mistakes so many of us make, because we were never trained, is we talk in a language that I like to call doctor speak. We talk to our patients as if they graduated with us, that they know what a joint of Lushka is, and they know what hibernation is, and they don't. And we have to remember that lay people don't want to look silly or stupid. So they sit there in front of you at your report of findings going, uh-huh, uh-huh, oh, that makes sense. Because that way they appear to be paying attention and appear to be getting it, but they don't. And part of the key to success, in fact, to me, one of the most important parts of success is learning how to communicate, to be more persuasive. And going back to your question, part of the reason we want to be more persuasive is because we want to be more influential. I don't believe I have any extraordinary talent. I don't believe God put something in me that he left out of everyone else. I'm no different than any of my colleagues. The difference is that I have been laser focused on being more influential. The purpose of influence is to influence how the other person thinks and then behaves. So part of that is knowing how to communicate, how to use emotionally charged words or, or phrases. Um, for example, I'm a subluxationist, but I don't even mention subluxation for the first visit or two with my new patient because it's just too foreign. I will get to it. I will get to it rather quickly and I will stick to it for as long as they're a patient, which is usually lifetime. But I use descriptors of a subluxation. So for example, I believe subluxations are serious. I believe they're chronic and I believe they're degenerative in nature. So when I meet with a brand new patient and I'm going over my report of findings, I want to say to them, Marcus, we did a very thorough case history. I did a very comprehensive exam. When I take all of that data and add to it my experience of all these years of being a chiropractic healer, I want you to know that you have a serious, chronic, and degenerative condition. And quite frankly, I'm concerned. Because in that moment, I created a sympathetic storm and I have their undivided attention because the purpose of the sympathetics is survival. And now for that moment, the patient is in survival. Now, if I left them there, shame on me. But I don't want to leave them there because my next comment will be, and Marcus, the good news is that I found exactly what's causing this problem and I happen to be an expert in correcting it. See, I use it to get their undivided attention to create chiropractic as a necessity and not as a luxury. When it's looked at as a luxury, three things consistently get in the way, time, distance, and money. But when it's viewed, when your care in your clinic is viewed as a necessity, time, distance, and money seem to disappear. So I want my patients to view my care the same way the heart patient views the cardiologist or the cancer patient views the oncologist or the diabetic views the endocrinologist, it's not an option. It's, it's a necessity. But I have to learn to communicate, to be influential, to change how they think and to change how they're behaving by using language. And it doesn't matter in this situation if it's verbal or it's written or it's on a video, or it's on a podcast, or in today's world, there's so many methods of communication. The truth is the best and most influential communicators use all of these mediums. Yeah. 
And that's the beautiful part about writing a book. Once you have this book, once you've put the time, effort and energy invested into getting your language clear, getting your material in a logical sequence, then you can begin to, as you said, your other opportunities unfold. And this is where the brand improves. You then start doing presentations, maybe do a workshop based around the book and you've already done the content. So you'll speak effortlessly on the principles of the book. And then you are on a podcast sharing this information. And then you are on stage at other events and you can utilize the material in the book to produce blogs and content. And all of a sudden, and, and you're recording these videos, putting it on your Facebook um, page and then your YouTube channel. So the beauty of the book is it begins the, the, the creation of the content, the delivery of the information, and then it expands out so broadly beyond that. And that's why the book also lends itself to a brand. And you, you alluded to that, that this positions you as the expert. It demonstrates your authority. What type of impact do you see that that has had personally for you and that you know, chiropractors, as you said, who decide to do this will change the landscape of, of health through chiropractic? What types of changes have you seen? You said you've had opportunities because of the book. What are some of those things that people could expect or anticipate or hope for? Well, first, e even in the process of doing the research for the book and then actually writing the book and synthesizing your ideas and being innovative in how you communicate. And one of the things I like to bring to the conversation is I connect it back to our history. I love the history of chiropractic. And I also use it to innovate about where I would like to see our future become. So I, I go back and forth between past, present, and future, which I think is important. I, at least it is for me. It's That's my niche. And to me, in the process of doing that research, doing that thinking, collating your thoughts, it creates a greater level of certainty and confidence, a, a greater ability to articulate your thinking, to give you clarity. You know, there's an old expression, clarity empowers us. And the lack of clarity, often called confusion, is what paralyzes us. And to me, I, I, I love speaking in front of groups. I love doing interviews like this because I'm never at a loss of what I want to talk about. I, I have this huge within breadth of knowledge and experience that I've developed over 43 years as a doctor of chiropractic that I could talk about this for hours on end. I, I, I love this process, but it, the process begins with doing the research and synthesizing your thinking and be able to connect the dots to where other people may not have seen a connection before. That's incredible. And, and for those watching, I also want to highlight something that even if you haven't yet written the book and you're in this process, um, a way that you can utilize books. And it's a really fascinating insight because um, and I, I want to just really acknowledge you, not just for the books and the wisdom that is there and all that you've done. For, for chiropractic, Dr. Bob, you, as you said, you, your experience in chiropractic is so broad and your impact on the profession is so great. And also when you've been operating that clinical basis, the lives you've changed, but when you wrote a book, I'll tell you what I sometimes do when, it, when a client comes in and I do a lot of brain-based chiropractic. I have my neuro approach to care. And when, when we talk to a client who may be experiencing some cognitive decline and you have the opportunity to communicate them with them about the role of chiropractic, the impact that it has. And you pick up a book and you say, you know, from a chiropractic perspective, what we are going to be doing is creating, you know, awakening your flourishing brain. By just having these books in your library, you say, you know, the experts in chiropractic, world leaders in chiropractic, focus on, you know, delivering the research that we're going to use in the care that I provide for you today. And so by having those types of books there on my shelf in my practice, immediately, it shows the patient that we know and understand the brain, that we are going to do something through chiropractic and the care that we deliver that alters the trajectory of their health and their life. So one, having the books is an incredible opportunity to deliver that. Secondly, when you have your own book, then you also build on that capability um, to impress upon them the significance of your message, which is this last okay. point I really want to highlight um, and I want to, to, to dive deep with you, you have impacted so many lives and you know, those people have you know, come back and said it's been you know, amazing for them. They've, they've contacted you. You've had opportunities. What personally has it meant for you to, to write a book, as I said, from a personal level, but also from a branding level 
that has, you know, uh, not on success or achievement because you are one of the great leaders of our profession, so well, um, you know, honoured by all your achievements. But I'd love for you to talk about on that personal level, having written the book, having spoken in so many places, having, having impacted so many lives because you've got that education out there. Who has Dr. Bob Hoffman become as a result of everything he has done and the impact he has made at the heart level? Well, first, thank you. Those are all beautiful comments. And I'm glad there are people like you who utilize the book to help others to serve others. So thank you for all that. Listen, I feel a great joy and a great level of fulfillment that my life matters, that I've made a difference, um, that I'm doing God's work, that I you know, what greater joy could there be than to help to lift up a colleague, to guide and mentor other people, to excel, to express more of the greatness that they have inside of them. Um, it's such a joyful thing that when you speak to somebody, and it doesn't matter if it's one-on-one -on -one or one to a hundred or one to a thousand, when you speak to other people and you see the light bulb go off in their eyes, like that thought, that cognitive thought just coalesced in their brain and you could just see it lighten up. I mean, it, it's a great feeling. There are times that I teach seminars. I even have um, with my partner, Dennis Perman, we will hand out a workbook and the people just, you know, you make a statement and they, they stop and they're taking copious notes and they're writing down exactly what you said, or they may even ask you, can you repeat exactly what you said? I want, I want to capture that. I mean, it's just such a fulfilling experience. You know, at the end of the day, we have three choices. We could see chiropractic as a job, nothing wrong with that. We could see chiropractic as a career, certainly a step up from a job and nothing wrong with that. But for me, and I hope for everybody watching this, I am certain that chiropractic is a calling. I didn't choose chiropractic, it chose me. When I go back, Marcus, and I look and how I ended up in chiropractic school, I never even applied. My chiropractor sent in an application for me and told me about it. I didn't know that there were chiropractic colleges. I didn't know, I didn't know any of that. I, and to show you how, how long I've been in chiropractic, I actually got a telegram acknowledging that I've been accepted to school. I went to my chiropractor and said, do you know anything about this? He goes, yeah, I thought you'd do really well as a chiropractor, so I applied for you. See, so I know, I know deep in my soul, I know in my, my, inside every cell of my being that I didn't choose it, it chose me. And every one of us have a story. And if we be honest with ourselves and remove our ego, every one of us got chosen. Every one of us jumped through hoops, did things that we never had done before, met people we didn't even know existed previously. We had all of these this maze that we had to get through, that we had to navigate through, that we didn't even know we were navigating, that landed us in chiropractic school. See, to me, chiropractic is a calling. It's a calling to serve. And as an example of that, and I, I hope I'm not going too long of my answer, as a, an example of that, in January of 1976, I started chiropractic school in the fall of 75, graduated in 78. But in January of 1976, I'd been three or four months in school. A couple of my classmates kidnapped me and drove me to a place called Marietta, Georgia, to Life College that had just opened maybe a year or so earlier. And I went to my very first DE meeting with Dr. Williams. And Dr. Williams spoke and I could hardly really understand him. He, you know, I, I miss him dearly. He was such an important mentor in my life. But he spoke about this concept of lasting purpose. I had, quite frankly, never thought of purpose at all. But this concept of lasting purpose had a profound effect on me to give, to serve, and to love out of my never-ending abundance, my inner well of giving, loving, and serving others. And right back then, as a young kid, as a young pup, I, I was three months, four months in chiropractic school. I knew this is why I had been called to chiropractic. I knew this is what my life was going to be like. I knew that I was prepared in that moment to dedicate myself, to give, 
to serve and to love out of my abundance, to make the world a better place, to influence how people think and behave. And um, I've worked at it for all these years in lots of different ways. I had a very successful private practice for over two decades. I was involved in politics for over 25 years, including being president of the ICA, as you acknowledged. I've been an entrepreneur, an innovator, a mentor, a coach, a CEO running a chiropractic successful business. I, I, I have zero regret, zero regret in my life. I just wanna keep influencing and keep leading and keep moving our profession further forward because we need to evolve. In my opinion, the greatest problem in chiropractic today is the failure to adapt. We're still asking case history questions from 70 years ago, and we're still offering the same care plans for a much, much sicker population. We have failed to adapt. Brain-based chiropractic is a great way to begin to change the evolution, the next gold standard for chiropractic, moving our profession further forward. And that is why for the last decade, I've given my heart and soul to helping as many people as I can understand and then implement and language a new model of practice that hundreds and hundreds of chiropractors around the world are practicing and flourishing at a rate they had never flourished before. I know it's naturally right. And I wish more of our chiropractors would come out of their shell come out of their robotic habitual behavior and take on some new innovation. Look at this from a slightly different angle. You know, one of the things that I often say to people is chiropractic is basically based on correcting subluxation, finding and correcting subluxation. And subluxation at its base is a bone out of place causing a neurological disturbance. As a profession, we have spent well over 90% of our time talking about the bone. And we really need to spend over 90% of our time talking about the neurological disturbance. Brain issues are much more significant, much more of a necessity than back issues. Absolutely. If you ask your patient, Mrs. Jones, what do you think is worse, a back problem or a brain problem? I'm thinking close to 100% of saying brain problem. And that's how we create better necessity. But we don't need to be neurologists, but we need to be neurologically aware to do neurological rehabilitation, which is primarily the adjustment, but not only the adjustment, to get people well, to allow them to live their best life, to be the best version of themselves, to express far more of that innate potential and innate greatness that resides in each and every one of us. And there is no one better to coach you through creating that brain-based approach to chiropractic than this man over here. He is a rock star of brain-based chiropractic. I've got one last question though, Dr. Bob, which is you've, you've spoken so elegantly. You've spoken so coherently. You have obviously depth of knowledge and, and experience, and that can be somewhat intimidating for so many people watching me saying, well, Dr. Bob's just said, Go out, write a book, become a presenter, serve chiropractic, fulfill your potential, be on a mission to change and save the world. That's okay for him. He's a legend. He's done all of these things. He's a rock star. He knows so much. I'm just a, a new grad chiropractor or I've been in chiropractic 10, 15 years and, and I've done the same thing. And it's, it feels like it's just comfortable and easy. And to do all of this and to become great and express my potential, that seems a bit of a lofty idea. And that's for the few, the chosen, not the masses. What do you say to people who maybe feel like I, they can't write a book? I and say I, re I reject that thought and I reject that story that you bought into that has held you back for way too long. You know, that is the, that is the simple short answer to that. As I said earlier, I don't have any skill that everybody has. We're all equal. We're all capable. I became an overnight success after 10 years of hard work. <laughs> and, and the reality is, we all have the ability to apply ourselves, to work hard, to learn our lessons, to do our research, to practice our communication skills, to become more productive, more influential. We all have that. You know, life is about what story you create and what story you decide to believe. I believe the story that I have no limitations. And I wish more of our colleagues bought into that story. Now, by the way, there is a brain-based explanation for this. 
The sympathetic nervous system's only goal is survival. So the sympathetic nervous system is responsible for telling you, don't color out of the lines, don't do something different, because the sympathetic nervous system knows that you're surviving doing exactly what you're currently doing. Don't do anything different. And it takes confidence. It takes vulnerability. It takes being willing to take risks to speak your truth, to step out into the unknown, to get comfortable being uncomfortable, to really become an influence key. That's exactly what I did. And I worked hard to always stay a step ahead, to always be prepared, to always know what I was gonna say to a patient or a staff member or a, an organization that I spoke to. I always wanted to be at that leading edge because that's where we all belong. I agree wholeheartedly, and I am so grateful you shared that and rejected the, the premise of my uh, fictitious claim, um, but that everyone watching this knows the truth they have within them, what it takes to succeed. Dr. Bob, I'm so grateful for you, for your message, for your continued service to chiropractic and humanity. Is there anything you'd love to say to, to close off this, what has been a really insightful conversation? Well, first, I thank you again for your friendship and for all you do for our beloved profession. Um, Thank you for this opportunity to just share some of my truths, my experience with all of the people who get to see or watch this. Uh, look, my parting comment is go for it. Just do it. Tell your truth. Tell your whole truth and nothing but your truth. Stop worrying about what other people are going to think of you. Back it up. Make decisions. Take action. Find joy. Focus on all the good things. Become a, the best version of yourself. Master the fundamentals. They're not difficult. If I could do it, I promise so could every one of you. And that's what we have on our mission to do. Let's go change the world and be our best self so that we can impact at the highest possible level. Dr. Bob, thank you. Everyone, come on. Let's do this together. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>